For those who don't know, Constellation DAG has contracts with the United States Air Force, huge government and enterprise partners, a novel protocol architecture that allows it to have pretty much infinite scalability whilst also being ISO 222 compliant and also offering a new and improved solution to smart contracts. But you guys will know the best part of all, Constellation is only at a $140 million market cap. So today, guys, we are going to be discussing all of this and more in my objective review on Constellation DAG. But look, I know what some of you probably are thinking, why in the world is Constellation so promising yet it's priced so cheaply? Have we really just lucked out or is this all too good to be true? Well, guess what guys, today we're gonna find out, but first, just a little word from our sponsor. And would you believe it, of course, it is me again. I just briefly wanted to ask you guys if you could go ahead and take a look at my Patreon page in the description to support all the hard work that goes into making these kinds of videos. Now for full transparency, all the funds generated over there will be put back into helping me create high quality, more frequent content. Now, with all that being said, let's get back to the video. So before we dive into how Constellation has proven to be so promising, let me enlighten you in what it's actually targeting. You see, Unlike a lot of the DeFi and crypto only projects out there, DAG is after the large markets, kind of like what Quant and XRP are doing in the sense that it's pretty much gonna have huge implications on our everyday lives, irrespective of Web 2 or Web 3, but more specifically, we're talking about big data. Now, big data is essentially what the name suggests, being data that is so large, fast, complex, and ever growing that it is difficult to process by standard measures. Now it's data that comes from things like internet searches, fintech, IoT devices, stock markets, and a whole heap more. Basically big data just spawns from the services that millions or even billions use all day. Every day, it's actually 2.5 billion gigabytes and growing to be exact. There are many issues that spawn from big data, like just simply not being able to adequately process and organize it with our current systems, but more importantly, an issue I am most concerned about is what the big corporations ultimately do with it. Turning kind of what you do and search online into a virtual version of yourself called an avatar and then sell that to companies for immense profits. So yeah, you're pretty much being used every day without even knowing it. This is where Constellation kind of comes in like Superman saving Lois Lane. Constellation has essentially poised itself to be able to process big data from any source for whatever the business using the network intends. That includes any company, government, or other entity wishing to use the Constellation network does have the ability to interconnect with other big data services in ways we simply have never seen, effectively cutting out the middleman, reducing overheads and processing times, of course, whilst ensuring the end user is never exploited or monetized unless they obviously have transparently approved to be. You could essentially call this a competitor to HTTP, which is the protocol the internet is actually built upon. Of course, all the while probably ensuring that users have end-to-end -end encryption with data security, something that obviously HTTP can't instinctively offer. But I know all this sounds great, but how the hell does Constellation actually work? Well, Constellation is a layer zero, kind of like Polkadot, which means it's essentially an infrastructure layer that allows networks to build on top of it for instant interoperability, scalability, and security. But actually, if we're gonna be technical here, guys, Constellation is solving more than just the scalability trilemma. Coined the so-called Quinn Lemma by Seth V, Constellation actually solves interoperability and composability as well, which is super important for a protocol's longevity. Also, the levels of customization for developers building on Constellation are endless, being able to create entire token economies with ease, and thanks to its microservice-like structure, it can basically interoperate with any service imaginable. And even more attractively, it's completely permissionless and open source, so anyone is able to verify the code and secure the network. So kind of with that backstory set, let's pop Constellation's hood. I think the carburetor, you got the carburetor right here, it connects to the radiator pump. The radiator pump Go through the AC compressor over here by the water pump. Now at the very heart of Constellation lies the Hypergraph Transfer Protocol, or HTTP for short, which enables the secure, scalable, and interoperable environment I was talking about a moment ago. Now you can kind of think of the Hypergraph Transfer Protocol as everything that goes into powering Constellation Network. However, it's actually the Hypergraph portion of the protocol that is the very foundation of this entire operation. 
Hypergraph, which is Constellation's very own type of DLT, sits at the very base of the network and is where all the finalized data is collected, ordered, and stored, analogous to Polkadot's <coughs> relay chain. But unlike Polkadot's relay chain, Hypergraph is not a blockchain. It's actually a variation of another type of DLT called a DAG or directed oscillate graph, which results in the ability to process transactions so-called asynchronously, meaning that they don't need to happen globally at the same time until they absolutely need to, which is why it's so efficient, fast, and of course, scalable. Now, Hypergraph is a little different to a DAG though, I must admit, because it actually allows multiple DAGs to run within it simultaneously called state channels. Now, a state channel is an independent DAG in its own right, serving an identical place in the network as a parachain does on Polkadot. Of course, state channels do differ because they're DAGs and not blockchains. However, they also offer a hell of a lot more than a parachain ever could, and that's coming from a Polkadot fanboy. If a company booted up their own state channel, they'd be able to connect and process information from literally any source they'd like, thanks to the channel being structured kind of like a microservice, allowing businesses to create new and exciting applications with insane interoperability solutions. If you're wondering how, well, it's all thanks to the implementation of these things called cells that can be leveraged in an infinite number. Now, a cell is basically where data flows in and is agreed upon by a consensus, then repackaged by applying specific business logic and spat out as a readable block. Now, this block can then be sent to a follow-up cell which can apply more logic if that is what the developers require. What this means is that a state channel can collect information from any source and step by step by step, transform that into whatever it's intended to be used for. Within a single state channel, there could be any number of cells that process data from an infinite number of sources like an IoT company's sensors, data from an enterprise blockchain on the Hyperledger fabric sort of blockchain service, and also cells that collect data from Facebook, for example. The list can just go on and on forever, and this can all happen within one single state channel. The best example would be like trying to imagine a car factory, as small individual parts that resemble obviously nothing of a car are added across different assembly lines. They're eventually coming out as larger, more noticeable sections of the vehicle, eventually creating components like doors that are welded to the chassis. I know, it sounds great, but surely creating a state channel must be pretty hard to do, right? Well. Actually, you might be surprised, not really. Constellation has created the Web3 launch kit, which is the network's very own end-to-end -end blockchain business toolkit, allowing state channels to create their own token with completely custom economic structures and overall design. But if you thought that was good, Constellation has an entirely separate toolkit that will be released for federal use called the Universal DLT Toolkit, as hinted here by the CSO Benjamin Diggles. I know, that's pretty awesome, but before I forget, a super interesting fact about Constellation is that DAG, which is Constellation's native token, is actually its own state channel built directly on top of what's called the global layer zero, which can just simply be summarized as the layer that adds the final stage of consensus on all of the data from all state channels, which is then obviously added to the immutable hypergraph ledger. Now, look, the way any of these state channels are connected to the hypergraph is actually all thanks to the L0 token standard, which is an advanced equivalent to the ERC20 or BEP20 token standards, obviously with a lot more flexibility. It pretty much enables state channels to connect to the global layer zero, which we won't explore in depth, otherwise we'd be here for quite a while. But what I will say is that within the global layer zero itself, validators that perform consensus are separated into tiers, which have a minimum and maximum number of spots, allowing Constellation to continue to process data extremely fast and actually scale as the number of nodes increase, unlike a monolithic network like Bitcoin. Now, for those geeks out there, this would kind of be the equivalent of Polkadot's relay chain being network sharded, which just simply means it's super, super fast. Now, look, I'll admit, I haven't really touched on the different nodes on the network up until this point, but I'm not going to make a huge fuss out of it either. All you kind of really need to know is that there are four types of node on Constellation, being validator nodes, state channel nodes, hybrid nodes, and light nodes. Now, to kind of make things a bit confusing for everyone, all the nodes are technically grouped together as so-called full soft nodes, 
other than the light nodes, which means they have a strict staking requirement of 250,000 DAG, which is more or less equivalent to about 13,000 US dollars. But on January the 1st, 2023, Constellation implemented what is called fractionalized soft nodes that allows users who may not have the 250,000 DAG tokens to still spin up a node and contribute to the network. From what I've read, I believe the same hardware requirements are still in place, which can honestly be still quite cheap if you run a node from a virtual private server. The catch is that these fractionalized soft nodes can only earn a maximum of 50% of what they could as a full soft node. However, this program is more so designed to further decentralize the network and obviously help validators earn rewards to eventually save up enough to kind of own an entire full soft node. Now, the consensus algorithm used by these nodes is also novel to Constellation called proof of reputable observation. I know it's a bit of a mouthful, aka just called PRO. Now, PRO moves away from the plurocratic environment we see most proof of work and proof of stake protocols slowly turning into so there's a big thumbs up there but kind of to cut a long story short consensus and the distribution of rewards all pens on a node's reputation whilst being managed by ai learning rather than running you know heavy computations or pretty much how much stake someone has in the network one quick thing i wanted to tag in here is that there are no transaction fees on the network at least for a period of time Every single wallet is allowed to send one free transaction per snapshot, and a snapshot is exactly every five seconds. Now, if a user executes more than one every five seconds, or just simply wants that transaction to be processed as quickly as possible, they can pay one datum, which is equivalent to this much DAG per transaction. So with that said, guys, what is my overall opinion on the technicals? Well, I must say I do like the fractionalized soft node staking idea and think it was a very good move on Constellation's part. However, I did actually hear that this option was actually reserved for a service building on Constellation called Node Army and that the Constellation team unexpectedly decided to implement the feature without notifying Node Army first. So you can kind of make of that what you will. I also don't particularly know if this technology is completely practical either at this current stage. What we tend to find with basically every project nowadays is that they plan to take over the world or replace existing systems, but it's kind of a huge gap between dreams and reality. And look, I do get it. Having a goal is great, but just remember that because a project says they can or will, it doesn't necessarily mean it's true. Overall, though, from an abstract technical standpoint, I'm going to give them a 10 out of 10 because I actually really love what they have here. But now it's time for the ecosystem. And as far as ecosystem and partners, well, this is where things get a little interesting. So far, there is 17 projects building on the network, which isn't that great considering Constellation's mainnet has been active for almost two years now. However, there is actually more going on here than meets the eye. There have been two versions of the mainnet over the duration of these two years, with mainnet 1.0 migrating to mainnet 2.0 only four months ago. And since mainnet 1.0 leveraged Ethereum during the initial testing phases, this leap into 2.0 meant the project is now running on their own technology, obviously being a very early form of the hypergraph. So yeah, you could pretty much say that mainnet has been active for two years, but realistically, most of that time has been spent developing and testing the HTTP protocol. So I'm not gonna mark them down for that. You've got to understand that a novel architecture that involves aspects like the hypergraph, L0 token standard state channels, and proof of reputable observation needs time to obviously perfect. So I'm not gonna criticize them for a small ecosystem actually, as a matter of fact, guys, I'm surprised they even have an ecosystem this early on at all. Now, there are three phases of mainnet 2.0 that you can see on your screen now, which details synergistic developments with a project called Lattice, another ecosystem partner founded by Constellation CEO Ben Jorgensen. Phase one has already been completed with phase two currently in the works, implementing their flagship projects to the protocol with the introduction of the L0 token standard. Now, I don't know exactly what their flagship projects are, but it's kind of safe to assume that they include Lattice, Alchemy, Door, and Genico, which we will touch on shortly. This isn't the video that plans to detail what the three phases are, but all you need to know is that right now, state channels aren't on mainnet. 
the consensus algorithm is still being worked on and the network is currently private and permission. So in that case, what does this actually mean for Constellation right now? Well, we can call the current ecosystem so-called soft launch projects that should be able to provide instant value to the network when it is fully operational, meaning we can't really say the ecosystem is lacking. We are just super, super early. Now, the three-step phase is more or less Constellation taking baby steps to ensure the completed protocol will work as intended, so there is no giant steps backwards. In saying that, some of the most promising flagship projects building on the ecosystem would have to be Lattice, which is essentially the gateway to the Constellation ecosystem that handles everything relating to the onboarding process for businesses. Now, Lattice is also a gateway for buying and swapping assets, acts as a launchpad node manager, offering bonding, which plans to fix the liquidity issues for projects on the network, and a lot more. But essentially, it's just a hub for all things DeFi on Constellation and is the go-to place for a business joining the network. Now, the reason Lattice has taken such a strong position in the Constellation ecosystem and why it just probably will never be outcompeted is because again, it's founded by Constellation CEO. So if you're a DAG supporter, you may as well be an LTX supporter as well. You also have Alchemy, which is a decentralized ad exchange that plans to restore the value exchange between advertisers, publishers, and users, which believe it or not, is a very, very real issue. Now I picked this because it's perfect for big data. So it actually aligns with Constellation's target audience and is a genuinely awesome product that solves some serious issues with today's online advertising. Being a flagship project means if the HTTP protocol really is implemented as an alternative to HTTP, the value would be instantly high and place the market cap for Alchemy pretty much above most crypto related projects today. Now, another ecosystem native project is called Door, a battery powered thermal sensor that tracks foot traffic in businesses providing data to shop owners regarding peak times, revenue traffic ratios, and more. In October of 2021, Constellation actually acquired Door for an undisclosed amount of money, instantly acquiring over 2,000 existing customers. Now, Door is pretty cool because it also acts as a Constellation light node, meaning it earns passive DAG while it runs and each unit is actually priced somewhat reasonably at $1,068 per year, making Door a viable product for large-scale businesses looking to perfect event times, discounts or specials, or from the comfort of their HQ. The reason I chose Door is mainly because it falls into the IoT big data market and works as a perfect test bed for this kind of service on Constellation. So as long as it continues scaling into franchises and multinational corporations, I see it doing pretty well. And finally, I'll mention Genico, a healthcare data exchange that allows individuals to own, control, and sell their healthcare data to large companies for all kinds of reasons. Now, the reasons can include things like research into beating diseases, finding cures, or just pretty much may mean collecting valuable data to help perfect a certain product. And while this kind of initially may seem dystopian, the current implementations look something like hospitals, big tech, and smaller clinics collecting this data anyway, and then selling it to big pharma, tech, and insurance companies without you having a single say about it. So with Genico, an individual has complete control over their healthcare and can decide where the data is sent to giving you more sovereignty than ever before. Genico is co-founded by Jenny Diggles, who happens to be the wife of Constellation Network CSO, Benjamin Diggles, as well as Michael Nova. Now, both are quite experienced individuals in their own way and in a combination with some super interesting advisors mm -hmm. like the now retired US Navy Admiral Bill Owens, the team is more than sound. In my opinion, guys, while this isn't the first crypto native solution for the issue, Genico is a fantastic project nevertheless, addressing very real concerns and works perfectly alongside the big data aspect of Constellation. As healthcare, as we should all hopefully know, consumes a significant portion of the world's data. Look, so by now I'm sure you all should have a very good understanding of why Constellation has decided to implement projects like this into their so-called flagship lineup. Whether you wanna say that they are pretty much priority because they are somehow connected to the team in one way or another, 
is up to you, but that doesn't necessarily mean they won't make great testing environments for Constellation's big data dreams. For the ecosystem, they get a seven, which is above average. And while the projects are cool in their own right, I have to mark them down because strictly speaking, there isn't a large ecosystem here. Although I'm very lenient because again, we're just simply very early. With all that out the way, let's move to an area of high controversy the partners now look guys this section took me days and days to verify with lots of very helpful intelligent and in the know people on constellation and its partners and after many many calls i have two very polar ideas of what is actually happening here so stay tuned to the very end to hear what those are now look obviously there is a lot to discuss here considering i spent days researching and questioning people but i don't want this video obviously rambling on for too long so depending on the feedback i get from this video it may be worth following things up in more detail but first for those people who have absolutely no idea what the I'm talking about let me explain so i've seen a lot of people talking about constellations partnerships particularly the business partnerships and how they're either old and never existed in the first place or that they're exaggerated to fit the narrative of a so-called super protocol when there just really isn't one. And I'll be honest, initially my thoughts were more or less the same because you won't find official articles from either or pretty much most of Constellation's partnerships, rather just a logo slapped on Constellation's website. Not to mention you have the unfortunate standard in crypto where projects list household names such as AWS, BMW or Apple to draw in more gullible investors where in reality, there is no partnerships or the project simply uses them as a service. You see, a typical mm. partnership means both sides are working together and or assisting each other in some way, shape or form. And kind of as far as the internet is concerned, a substantial number of Constellations partners don't fit this bill or aren't mentioned on the other side at all. And this includes the likes of AWS, GBA, Dartmouth, Mousebell, and Ledger, with Portland State University simply being an advisory role, some of the team took in blockchain business certificate programs. Now, it appears Space Isaac is a membership and not a partnership by definition, and the same can be said with the IEEE. Now, from the research I have conducted, it appears that Amazon is historically very open about their partnerships and only does so with companies that have a working product which constellation does not however i have actually spoken with a prominent and in the know constellation community member which has mentioned that there is in fact a partnership here it's just under an nda and very tight-lipped now if you're kind of asking me this is very hard to guarantee without definitive proof from amazon themselves as taking someone's word that a partnership is there isn't enough evidence and that's somewhat reasonable to say i would pretty much assume now look i will be 100 percent fair and mention that it is entirely possible because as we all know there is always a first for anything so i can't be 100 percent sure either after all a protocol that can change the world doesn't necessarily come around very often look I don't have the time to go into detail for each and every single one of these so-called partners I've mentioned today. However, you're more than welcome to do some digging yourself. Right now, pretty much the only kind of conversation around most of these partnerships is community gossip, presumptions, and just pure speculation. Now, there are some concerns floating around in regards to the connection to the Department of Defense and US Air Force, as there is no formal deal or partnership that has been so far mentioned. Now, in this regard, there are two main supporting factors that people should consider to either refute or confirm any collaboration with a US government agency. They are, in this case, the SBIR contract and the letter of support from the US AOC and AMC. Now, I don't plan on touching on the letter of support because it does somewhat show that there is support there. However, I do think the way it's used is honestly a little overblown. I mainly want to talk about the SBIR contract as it holds a lot more context. So for those that don't know, the SBII or Small Business Innovation Research Program is one that many, many small businesses are enrolled in and funded by US agencies for the chance to apply their technology to one or more of the following government agencies. There are two phases a company must complete and pass to be considered for the third and final phase, which is then being adopted by at least one of the aforementioned agencies. Now, Constellation has actually completed both phase one and phase two, receiving a combined total of just under $800,000 from the DOD, 
as you can see here. But phase three is honestly the very difficult part. This is where the department that runs the SBIR grants withdraw and allow any interested agencies to pursue further trials or adoption, which may require commercialization first. Now, the real kicker is that phase three doesn't require any public record. So right now, we really have no definitive way of proving whether there is a working relationship with the DOD. And this is pretty much where most people, including myself, are kind of stumped. We can see that the DOD were interested in consolation in those first two rounds. However, we are unsure on the developments of phase three because we aren't supposed to know. It's just simple as that. Now, look, you gotta understand, guys, it would literally be a threat to national security if pretty much word got out that the Constellation Network is working with the US government on implementing the HDTP, as any one entity or nation could then buy the entire supply of DAG, jeopardizing the entire operation. So if you're asking me, there is a 50-50 chance Constellation is currently working with the DOD. So in that case, I'm sorry to disappoint. However, since phase two was completed several months ago, if there was to be a partnership, it would very well be in the works right now. Actually, if we're being very technical here, one theory states that Constellation has already delivered on phase three, which is the somewhat recent news of the Universal DLT Toolkit and Iron Spider programs being the result. But look, all that aside, Constellation could simply be working with the DoD on a private network similar to HTTP rather than the Constellation network itself. We honestly have no idea. However, these theories might explain some minor yet mounting concerns I have with the project that indicate a lack of care for retail investors. Now, I could go on and on about what I mean by lack of care for retail investors, like that the GitHub repository hasn't been touched since August last year, and even then it was barely being worked on. All the website's homepage mentions that the TPS was so-called ADK+. However, hovering over the question mark, you are told that it was 80,000 transactions that occurred over a seven second period across six nodes. Next to that also, the 300 plus validators indicate the project is somewhat decentralized, which obviously fits the narrative. However, hovering the question mark, it will show that this was between mainnet 1.0 and testnet 2.0. Now I know mainnet 2.0 is out now and there are more validators currently. However, the fact that this was ever displayed in my opinion is just a little bit wrong. Most people would probably kind of see that and just not care. However, looking at this from the perspective of a newbie, they're gonna be seeing that as quite impressive without understanding the truth behind it. And in my opinion, it's kind of smoke and mirrors and kind of while they aren't outright lying per se, they aren't being very clear either. And I mean, you can't tell me the same team who built the hypergraph happened to unintentionally misdirect people like this. Additionally, you know those question marks I was showing you a moment ago? Well, on the hypergraph page, if you hover your mouse over them again, the placeholder text will appear. Again, it's a very minuscule complaint. However, it's not what you'd expect from a company working with so many big names with such grand goals. And finally, their Medium page is hardly ever updated, which seems to me like they are leaving the community in the dark overall. I know for a fact that many of the community members are concerned with what I have mentioned here. And for the community to be concerned, it's a no brainer that someone like myself, who is an outside investor looking in, would want to stay out of the project at least for now. So with all of this said, let me give you an analogy to summarize my thoughts. Let's just say that you're talking to some friends who mentioned how good their 10 year old is at tennis. And your friends tell you that the kid has a pretty good forehand for someone so young, and that he's won a couple of local tournaments. They then turn to you with absolute certainty and say their child is going to become the next Roger Federer. And while you haven't seen the kid play before, you've seen his trophies, so you know that they can't be lying. Now, armed with this very information, would you be willing to place a bet on the child becoming a tennis superstar? And just think about how much you're willing to invest in consolation and then ask yourself if you'd bet the same amount of money to agree with the parents. The question is, is he worth betting on? And the answer is just pretty much how much of a betting person you really are. But if you ask me, the answer is no, at least not until he's been winning state titles and you've seen how good he is. So right now, it's way too early to tell what the hell is happening with consolation because we basically need to see those state titles, aka the proof these large name partners are true. Yes, the tech 
theoretically does sound very amazing and yes the partnerships are equally as impressive but right now things are too vague to make any sort of correct calls most of the information is coming from breadcrumbs or people who have a stake in the project and therefore want to obviously see it succeed and if constellation really does have ndas with big name partners then of course there is just ginormous potential here and i'd be kidding if i didn't think that because after all constellation hasn't changed from what i said in the introduction of this video the tech really can change the world but the way I kind of see the future of Constellation unfolding is in those two ways I was mentioning earlier. The first is a positive one, and it's that Constellation can somehow certify their partnerships and complete a full mainnet rollout, meaning they have a working product and we can see the ecosystem flourishing. Similarly, I could also see the partnerships continuing their NDA agreements to prevent huge companies or nations from buying up all the DAG supply, even after mainnet is complete. The issue then becomes, will we be able to confirm any of the partnerships? And if so, will it then be too late? Well, I dare say waiting until mainnet is complete and the product is working with a growing ecosystem might actually be a good indicator as to something starting to brew. Now, even with all my qualms on the table, when you do think about it, if you had a multi-billion dollar deals or multiple deals with governments or large enterprises like Amazon, would you really prioritize your tiny and declining 10K member community? The chances are most of us probably wouldn't. On the flip side, this could simply be a top-down strategy to fill the community in whatever capacity that may be, or simply it's just a dying project. Do I think either of these are happening? Well, I can't say for certain right now that it isn't happening, but I would also say that for it to happen, it's got to be pretty damn ballsy from the team, seeing as who they have previously worked with. All right, guys, with that being said, let's close this video out with some important points to remember. Think about waiting until the mainnet is completely released and that they have a working product at that point or kind of any point before it. Keep a lookout for confirmed partnerships as this will be huge for the success of the protocol. Also, Ensure that you join the Telegram groups relating to Constellation and its flagship projects for frequent updates and so on. Basically, just keep your finger on the pulse because I really only see this going one of two ways. Nevertheless, guys, as you've probably been able to tell in this video, the idea of Constellation is great. It's just far too early to be able to throw any money into it as an actual investment. So overall, on a score out of 10, Constellation would be a solid four for now. Obviously, if the partners are more than meets the eye, I'd probably rate this a 12 out of 10, hands down, because it's probably one of the most promising cryptocurrencies and companies in existence. There is no question about that. But as for right now, I'd rather wait this one out and just see how it progresses. And before we go, I want to thank everyone who has helped me create today's video. You all know who you are, and I couldn't have done it without you. With that being said, guys, thanks for listening. I hope you haven't taken this as me crapping on Constellation with FUD. This is just my objective analysis. With that being said, take care, everyone, and I'll see you on the next video.